from Brewster's, 8751 Judge Perez Drive in the old Village Square in Chalmette. It's time for the Prep Recruiting Insider. Hello everybody, I'm Ken Berthelot along with Renee Nado, our recruiting expert and a sportscaster, and we're here to talk recruiting with you for the next hour. We have been focusing for the last few weeks on the class of 2012, and it is a good one. But just as good is the class of 2013, and that's who we are here to talk about today. Renee, sometimes I think you get more excited about the class of 2013 than you do about the current crop. Well, you know, the thing is that there's so much talent in this state, in this area, and we've been talking mostly about what's in this area, but uh, there's a lot of talent around the state, and 2014 looks extremely promising as well. Well, we have a list of Renee's top 30 recruits from the class of 2013, so let's count them down and go right to them. And we'll start uh, right here with 30 through 26. And hey, we've called this guy's name a few times from John Curtis in some ball games, Sherman Beatty. Sherman Beatty looking at a lot of schools, and the SEC is getting involved now. Ole Miss is, is a late player, Brazley committed to Ole Miss. Shelby Christie, Mississippi State commit. Draper Riley uh, out of uh, West Jefferson going to Southern Mississippi, and Duke Riley out of, out of Curtis is really an outstanding linebacker. And we'll take a look at uh, some of the video right here. And this would be Shelby Christie. Shelby Christie out of Dutchdale, 4-5 speed, good hands, good routes, good wide receiver. 6'3", 175, Kenny, and he catches the ball out in front of him. Good little comeback route right there out of Dutchtown, and you can see that uh, he has good awareness, good separation from the defensive back, and Christie's gonna be a good one. Finds the open spot, acrobatic catches, and he's gonna be a good one. And that was numbers 30 through 26. Let's take a look and see who sneaks into the top 25, and it starts out there with Damian Williams from Rummo. Damian Williams, 6'1", 215, getting a lot of looks. Kansas State is a big player for the quarterback for the undefeated Raiders. Chuck Baker out of Salomon, a commit to the LSU Tigers. Corey Smith heading to Tulane, and you can see Chuck Baker, wide receiver, tremendous explosion and speed, good hands for the Salomon Spartans. Uh, he's going to be a good, good receiver for the LSU Tigers, 6'1", 183. Edward Williams, 15 tackles for Warren Easton. Uh, he's going to Texas A&M. And C.J. Malone, uh, he's the son of Carl Malone. He's going to LSU. Might be a tackle out of Cedar Creek. Oh, good genetics there. No doubt about it. Let's take a look now and see who's into the top 20. And it all starts with Ronald Lewis. Wow, Ronald Lewis explosive. 4-4 four, four speed out of West Jefferson. He's going to be an Arizona State Sun Devil. Ryan Pofield out of Brother Martin, going to be a Florida State Seminole. Michael Patterson going to play for the LSU Tigers. Uh, uh, Darian Claiborne, Texas A&M commit out of Fort Allen. And, and Travell Dixon is a West St. Mary's uh, athlete. Great safety. Had offers from Nebraska, Colorado, Arizona State, A&M, and ULL. He's going to be a fine catch for someone. 6'1", 190. Here's the top 15 as listed by Rene Nado on the big board. Jeremy Cutra out of Jules Sumner, a safety, headed to the LSU Tigers, 6'3", 175. A big tight end out of Edna Carr, 6'5", 240. Standish Dobard going to play for the Miami Hurricanes. 13 is Tevin Dawson. He's a two-way performer for Denham Springs. Will probably be a defensive tackle for the LSU Tigers. Kenneth Santa Marina, McDonough, 35, 6'7", 335. He is a dominating performer for the McDonough 35. And remember, Kenneth, this is a guy who's 6'7", 335, explodes off the blocks and really dominates, finishes his block, a lot of pancakes for the McDonough 35. Right now, Alabama, Nebraska had some inside with him. But uh, Kenneth Santa Marina is really an outstanding player. And, uh, you know, he's, he's the kind of guy that he plays a little smaller than his size, needs to lose a little weight. But you see, he gets up and, and runs pretty well for a man his size, Kenneth Santa Marina. He was number one on your local Southeast Louisiana list for a while. And he's still rated really high. It's just that guys have been playing and, and we're moving guys around. But you see, he does run well and, and leads the interference a little bit. Now we're nearing the top 10, but let's take a look at the final people in the top 15. Melvin Jones at number 11. Melvin Jones headed to LSU. He's a 6'4", 248-pound inside linebacker out of Washington, Marion. 
how the top 10 list starts with no L. Ellis, and we have talked about him quite a bit committed to Texas A&M. Ed Dakar, 4 5 speed, 37 inch vertical caddies. He's been a cornerback for four years, great natural ability, tremendous technique, good cover skills, athleticism. He locates the ball well, and that's the, that's the skill you want out of a cornerback. Uh, that's the primary skill. Number nine on your list, wide receiver Raheem Falcon from and, Carver. And we've had him on the show, 4 4 speed, 6 4, 200 pounds. He's headed to Alabama. Uh, he's a Larry Fitzgerald type of receiver. He'll probably play as a freshman. Got good hands, routes, works really, really hard, attacks the ball, and catches the ball away from his body. Number eight on your list, Renee, tight end Deshaun Smith from Deshaun, Barb. Deshaun Smith out of Barb, 4'6". He's headed to the LSU Tigers. Great ball skills, a receiver, more of a receiver than a blocker right now. Number seven on your list is cornerback Jero Brazil, and he is from LaRonger. Wow, is he explosive and fast. 4'3", 540. 4'3". Yes, he's Whoa. fast, Kenny. He's an LSU commit, and he plays on both sides of the ball. But you see him right here, finding the ball on a, on a, uh, in, in, on a catch, and he's got great hands. He plays both sides of the ball, and he comes up with an interception or a good uh, tackle right here. Comes and fills from his cornerback position. He'll play on defense for the Tigers. Comes, finds the ball in flight and knocks it away. Wow. Really good cover skills right there, Gerald Brazil. 5'10", 178, but plays bigger than his size. And again, comes up with another big defensive play here, coming down with an interception and returns flashing those sub 4-4 four, four speeds. You can see how fast he is. And then the number six person on your list, right here, a wide receiver, John Darce from Neville. Six foot, 205 pounds, wide receiver and a safety. He's going to play for the LSU Tigers. Could be an outstanding receiver, but I think maybe he'll play at uh, safety. You see, against in the Dome in the state championship game, a 95-yard touchdown pass in the state championship game for the Neville Tigers. He's got explosive speed, and he is playing defense. You see, knocking the ball away and, and uh, playing playing the ball well. Doris is uh, great awareness. He's he's kind of a little bit of like a LaRon Landry, Eric Reed, Chad Jones. You know, he'll he'll be that safety that's, that plays for a long time for the LSU Tigers, taking an interception to the house. And such an athlete, he can even play at the quarterback slot. He does, and and he is, he is a, a big play here as he comes down with a, a nice catch as a wide receiver. And he does play a lot of court quarterback, as you alluded to, for the Neville Tigers. Number five on your list is a guard, and he is Josh Booty from Westgate. Josh Booty, 6'5", 305, headed to the LSU Tigers. He's a little nasty, finishes his block, and he's really done well. He'll play guard inside for the Tigers, but he's gotten a little more consistent the last few games. Number four on your list, a linebacker, Kendall Beckwith from East Feliciana. And you know, he's, he's getting uh, a lot of attention from LSU, Alabama, Nebraska, Notre Dame. And uh, he's, uh, he's going to play linebacker defensive end. You see him with his hand on the ground right here, coming in, crashing in, and disrupting this play completely. Uh, I think right now LSU might have a little bit of an inside uh, thing here. Alabama has really, but he's going to be visiting LSU. He's had an injury most recently, but uh, he's coming back from his injury. Great pursuit. And you see, again, as a quarterback, he's big, 6'3", 225, 230. Uh, looks a more looks like a big uh, Jamarcus <laughs> Russell right it there. Goodness, look at the size and the movement to go with it. Great athleticism, and again, we mentioned he's still recovering from an injury, but he's learning to play linebacker where he will play for the, whoever he plays for on the next level. Top three now on the Rene Nato statewide list for class of 2013, cornerback Ricky Jefferson from Destrahan. Two of the top three are committed to the LSU Tigers. He's one of them, 4'4", four, four, five speed, plays both cornerback and wide receiver, will be a cornerback for the Tigers. Boy, he is a big one. Then let's go to number two, and that is Tredavious uh, White, and he is from Green Oaks. 5'11", 165, 4, 4, 5 speed, a cornerback. He's related to Mo Claiborne. Reminds me a lot of Mo Claiborne. Great hips explosion, moves to the ball, uh, plays the receiver very well and the ball equally as well. Tredavious White, I think he can see the field as a true freshman as LSU has a lot of young cornerbacks this year. And then your number one recruit for the class of 2013 is a defensive end and a linebacker from University Lab, Tim Williams. He looks like a college junior or senior when you look at him in this picture. 6'4", 235, will play defensive end or outside linebacker depending on what kind of scheme they run. Dominating pass rusher, uses his hands very well. He disrupts, he, he demands a double and triple team 
clock, and you see him number one right here, Kenny, as he just slides over, skates along the line, and makes the tackle. Uh, he'll gain about 20 pounds to that 235. 6'4 frame. He likes Miami. He could be heading out of state. He likes Miami and Florida State right now, but LSU, Southern Cal, Alabama, AM, Auburn, Florida, Tennessee, and Notre Dame are also in the mix. His family wants to see him play close to home. Being from Baton Rouge, that could help the local schools a little bit. But what a dominating player Tim Williams is right here. Look, you see him fighting off the block and just a, a guy that you have to scheme against when you're playing Southern Land. Wow, what a player, what a list from the class of 2013. And if you had to rate the class of 2012, and I know this is probably an unfair question, against the class of two, 2013, how would you rate them? Well, you know, the 2012 class is playing right now, so I'd say that uh, the class that is playing as freshmen uh, is a good class. The 2013 class, you got some guys playing different positions like Kendall Beckwith, uh, so it'll be hard to say, but the 2013 class is promises to be a very, very good class. And again, you got a lot of out-of-state guys, Texas A&M, Nebraska's, Alabama's, Auburn's coming in to, to get them. At, uh, so they're, they're getting a lot of attention. Well, I'll tell you what, it's going to be an interesting recruiting battle for the next few years in this local area and in this state. We will take a break, and when we come back, we'll visit with Coach Nelson Stewart. We're at Brewster's in Chalmette. From Brewster's in Village Square in Chalmette, this is Prep Recruiting Insider. Welcome back. I'm Ken Berthelot. This is the home of the Brewster Burger. The big one or the small one, you'll like it. Great place to watch games. Our guest in this segment, uh, joining Renee and I, is uh, a one of the best coaches in the Southeast Louisiana area. He's the head coach of the Newman Greenies beginning his seventh year there, where he's won more than 83% of his games, and he is Coach Nelson Stewart. Nelson, thank you for being with us. Glad thank to have you, you as our guest, and you've got a big football game coming up this week, a district game against the John Curtis Patriots. Uh, we sure do. I mean, there's not uh, there's not a lot I can say about John Curtis that hasn't been said, but um, there's a reason that they're ranked number one in the country in a number of polls. Uh, there are not a lot of weaknesses there. Obviously, you go outside the tradition. I think what makes this team so exceptional is their depth at running back. Um, really, a second to none in their defense. Boy, they come off the edge. Um, they're not giving up any points. Uh, whenever you look at them on film and you hear so much about their special teams, um, this is as good a uh, John Curtis team as I've seen in my tenure and probably one of the best ones they've ever had. So, with that question, we're going to have to play our best football. And that being said, it's tough enough to play John Curtis when you've got a full complement of players this year you're handicapped to some degree in that you only have 38 players and you're missing a couple of key players for this game including your starting quarterback Jay Tyler um, yeah yeah we, we sure are we you know we're, we're still uh, playing the price for that uh, shootout of the ages a few <laughs> weeks ago against Carver in the 7-2 to uh, 68 game uh, you know, obviously our kids, it was a four-hour matchup, and uh, you came out losing, you know, five or six starters, including, you know, Jay, who was uh, not 100% last week. Um, Talk about he, what he brings to the table for you, too, at the quarterback slot when he's in there as a sophomore. Yeah, well, sure. I think he's just, he's a well-rounded quarterback. He has tremendous maturity for his age. You would never know he's a sophomore, and that he understands all of the coverages. He's a leader on the field. Uh, he's not just a runner. He can throw. He has great accuracy, and I think what, you know, you know, allows him uh, to do so many things, as you just saw in that clip, is he can throw on the run. That's a 10-yard in throw, and those are things you can't teach, has good body position. And uh, really, there's not anything that he lacks at the quarterback position. Uh, he just hey, had to battle through some injuries last week, but, you know, good footwork. You know, beelined it right there to our wideout, Gilly Andre, off play action. And he's not afraid to take a lick in the pocket. Well, you know, the thing about him is, and you know, you think of the Mannings, and, and, and Nelson played with, with Peyton Manning. He was an all-district performer with, with uh, Peyton Manning. He's done something that neither Eli or Peyton could accomplish. Six touchdown passes in one game. He did it twice in the same month in that game against Carver. He had nine touchdowns, six via the air, three with his feet. So 
uh, you know, you got to really prepare for him, uh, not just as a passer. Well, no, exactly. I think that, you know, in our offense, we want our quarterback to, you know, be a thrower first, but also be able to run. And I think that's so important. And he can do that. Um, you know, we really are able to spread the field. We're not very big up front, but we do have, you know, disciplined kids that are going to, you know, understand defenses, understand their footwork. And uh, when you have someone like that at the helm that really has a good understanding of how to attack coverages, both running and throwing, that's really where I think it all comes together. And, you know, right now with well over 20 touchdowns and, you know, really uh, only, you know, four and a half complete games. That's a staggering number, but, you know, he does have a nice supporting cast of wide receivers around him. Uh, the, the line's gotten better every week, and, you know, I, I'd be lying if I didn't say we we're excited about the future. He's, uh, uh, and I think you have to say his father's done a good job, you know, raising him, teaching him little things from his mechanics to his boys and how to be a leader, and uh, you know, he's, he, he, he's very, very special. And really his father, is. of course, is Herb Tyler, former LSU quarterback. With uh, Jay out, then Gilly Andre has to start a quarterback moving over from his wide receiver position. How is that going to affect your game plan or how you approach this Curtis game? Well, I think that what, you know, the first thing our philosophy is, and, and, and a number of coaches, in your biggest games against great opponents, you have to just you know, pick a few things that you do, uh, do, do the best and do them well on the field. You know, against John Curtis, you don't uh, want to run any kind of funky formations, and they've seen all that. Really put your kids in you know, the best position to have success. When you talk about Gilly, he's a kid that's a great runner. He's a great thrower. Again, he's a team captain. Uh, he's you know, got a shot, ironically, at our single season uh, receiving record that's been on the table since 91 with Cooper Manning. And uh, the reason is because he really understands uh, our offense. He's a great route runner. He understands our patterns. And also, as much as we throw in the summer, he's been able to get a lot of work under center. He got uh, work Monday and Tuesday this week. The practice film looked excellent. You know, his, you know, his balls were spot on. And so I think he'll be ready. I really do. And, uh, you know, we'll have a few guys out moving pieces, you know, all around. But, you know, uh, with him having to step in, we, we do have confidence he can execute our base offense. We're not going to put anything special or crazy in for him. Uh, the, the secret with John Curtis, you know where they're going to line up. They're just going to hit you when they do it. And they're going to do it. They're going to play hard. And they're going to do it legally. They're just going to hit you. So you just have to, you know, know where the creases are and execute. Execute uh, as quickly as possible. And you've had a program that produced Odell Beckham, who's now playing for the LSU Tigers, and you got some guys who are being recruited. Uh, the thing is, you talked about the future, Nelson, and the thing that's going to make you feel good is, is Jay Taylor is just a sophomore. You've got kids that are playing as freshmen, played as eighth graders. Uh, you only have 38 players right now, but next year you'll probably feel about 60 or thereabout, yep. so the numbers are going to grow. Yeah, no question. I think, you know, our roster going into the season was 45 players. Um, injuries, you know, for whatever reason have taken a toll. We're dipping below the 40s, which is new for us. But, um, again, we have a sophomore running back in Kirk Merritt, Justin Harrell, uh, who's a real outstanding DB wide receiver. Again, is only a junior. Uh, one of our top players in our program, Kendall Bussey, uh, has been injured this year, and he'll be back next year, and he'll do, you know, be better than ever. And uh, the majority majority of our linemen are sophomores and juniors and you know you'll look as you see the depth chart that this is a very young football team that they're growing every week even though they've been thrown in the fire a few times and they're still learning uh, we think that the future is definitely bright along with our eighth grade that's really doing well in league play and we think are gonna you know bring in a class of 20 25 kids getting us right in that you know 60 uh, 60 number and we don't have to boot two ways many kids and again we're just we're, we're very excited about the future of our program well, the program's in great hands, and we applaud you for the leadership you have brought to the Newman Greeny program. Well, guys, thank you all so much. And again, it's just there's nothing like Louisiana uh, high school sports and prep football and things like this that make it so special. I can't thank you enough for having me. Coach Nelson Stewart of the Newman Greenies will take a break. We are at Brewster's in Chalmette, home of the Brewster Burger and some doggone good steaks. You can watch the games here, too. Back in a minute. Back at Brewster's here in Village Square in Chalmette, home of the Brewster's Burger and a great place to watch games. Ken Berthelot along with the Oval Sportscaster Renee Nadeau, Nelson Stewart, head coach of Newman, stays with us. And we are joined by a wide receiver who is going to play some quarterback this week. 6'2", 180-pound senior, Gilly Andre. And Gilly, welcome to the show along with Coach. Glad to have you. Thanks for having me. Uh, first of all, before you even talk about making the move to quarterback, you have to be excited about the great start the Newman Greenies have had this year. Yes, sir. Really excited. We're looking forward to keep it going. Well, you know, you have, and Coach Stewart was telling us that, you have an opportunity to maybe break some long-standing long records. Cooper Manning has, I think, 80 catches, over 1,200 yards. 
Uh, it's going to be sidetracked a little bit as you move to quarterback. But uh, in the back of your mind, do you think of those? Those I know you want to keep winning, but in the back of your mind, do you think about things that you could get a record you could set before you leave Newman? Well, I mean, obviously, you're always thinking about your legacy as you leave the school, but uh, mostly from week to week, it's just winning that game. Now you also a good student, and you've attracted attention from Millsaps and, and Rhodes College and, and, and Tulane and Purdue have also given you some interest. Talk a little bit about how the recruiting process is, and what are you looking for in a school, and, and where you'd like to play in college, perhaps. Well, the recruiting process is going well. Um, looking for a school that uh, can give me benefits academically and also athletically, but mostly, I mean, you're looking for life after football. So trying to set up your career when you're done playing or when you're done with school. And uh, as far as how, how it's going, it's going well. Um, Rhodes is actually coming to this game on Friday, so a little bit of added pressure for <laughs> big game for its number one team in the nation. Well, it, it'll be kind of interesting that you're playing another position. Do you feel like wide receiver is your best fit on the next level? Um, it's really wherever the coach thinks that I can help the team the most. But wide receiver, Yes, sir, pretty much. The wide receiver is the position I want to play in the next level. And what do you feel like is your strength as a wide receiver? Um, understanding uh, the route concepts and the defenses. Since I also play quarterback, I can also, or I can tell what Jay's reads are going to be, uh, what he's thinking in each different situation, and make adjustments to, it, to that. Now, Jay's out this week, and against Curtis, you've got to step into the quarterback slot. What type of challenges does that present for you? Well, it's a big challenge because of uh, their depth at defense. They have athletes all over the field, but one good thing about playing them is you know what they're going to do, you know what formations, what coverage they're going to bring to the game, and so you just have to prepare for those things. And, and how are you helping the wide receivers, especially the one who's going to have to step into your position, how are you helping, get, helping him get ready for the game? Well, just giving him tips on what exactly, what to expect during the game, the speed, uh, what the D, certain things the DBs and linebackers are going to do in the coverages and stuff like that. This guy sitting next to you has been a good head coach that brought you to a lot of victories. What have you taken away from Coach Nelson Stewart that's helped make you a better football player, ready for college and maybe ready for life? Well, just uh, being a better man, also putting the team ahead of you, ahead of the individual. I think uh, I went to a, actually a captain's uh, retreat thing for during the off season and the first thing they said was you're not special it's the team first no individual is put above the team yeah. nelson he's got to be a very special young man to coach uh, he really is i think you know he's an example for us that um you know we joke he's played so many positions for us he's a leader he's respected um not just by his teammates but from uh, other coaches and other sports as well as uh you know, the faculty administration, and you know, he's what our program's all about. I mean, he's a young man that can play a number of positions. He literally will play wherever you put him. He'll never ask for the ball. Uh, he's our punter. He returns kicks. He actually plays outside linebacker. He probably won't be um, on Friday with playing quarterback. And there are not enough good things you can say about him. I think that, you know, uh, with, a smaller, uh, with a smaller crew, uh, it takes great leaders. And obviously, he's one of our leaders. We just have outstanding leadership. And he's the reason you coach. That's why you coach high school football for kids like Gilly. If you had to ask Gilly any one question about either this game or about his time at Newman, what would it be? Ask, ask him that. Well, I think about asking him anything. It's uh, I know we talk all the time. It's just that, uh, uh, just just what is the number one thing that he could take away uh, from our program uh, that'll help him in life? We talk about those things all the time, and I think that's what helps us when they leave. What are the things that you've learned? What's one thing you've learned that's going to help you down the road? Uh, his legacy is going to be whether he has records or not. He'll go down as one of the greatest wide receivers we've had. But uh, it's more important. We we want that hug in, in five or ten years when they come back on Friday night. So that's our big thing. Is what are the things that we've given you? You're going to be able to take with. Gilly, do you have any idea what you think you want to do with your life? Um, looking to become a doctor. Uh, so going to medical school after college and see where that takes me. And I can't let you guys get away without asking Nelson Stewart. You played Nelson on the 12 and 0 undefeated team in '98 under Tommy Bowden at Tulane. <laughs> What did that, I know that meant a lot to you, and, and briefly in the last 45 seconds we have remaining, what did you take away from Tommy Bob that's helped make you the successful coach you are today? Well, I think that you see that, you know, the, the culture he brought to Tulane's program. You know, he had a winning attitude every day of practice from his attention to detail, his enthusiasm, 
the importance of assistance, you know, when they brought him in. Um, really, what he did in two years at Tulane is unprecedented um, because just especially as a lineman, you could see how the dynamic changed, how the energy changed, and you realize as a coach that, you know, what it takes, not just on the field, but also with a positive mindset and, and the obstacles that Tulane can present. He and Coach Rodriguez and Burton Burns and all those guys overcame all that. And uh, I think that, you know, if you, you know, to go into coaching, going from where we started with 2-9 and my first year to where we finished 12-0, uh, you could see the difference that that attitude in coaching could make. Thank you very much, Nelson Stewart. And Gilly Andre for being with us on this show on Prep Recruiting Insider. Best of luck against Curtis this week. Thank you all so much. All right, Thank we'll you. take a break. We are live at Brewster's, and we will be back right after this. Brewster's, home of the Brewster Burger, great steaks, and a fun place to watch football on the big screen TV. Back at Brewster's here in Chalmette, Village Square, home of the Brewster Burger and some mighty fine steaks. Ken Berthelot along with Renee Nado on the Prep Recruiting Insider. And in this segment, we take a look at the top 10 in the different classifications. And let's go right to the board, Renee, because in 5A, there's no big surprise who's at the top. Rummel keeps winning, and Rummel remains the top of the 5A board. And there they are. Undefeated at 5-0. And, oh. and they'll be faced off with Wes Jefferson this week. Wes Jefferson, Shaman Gouges, 353 yards, three touchdowns, uh, six catches. Devin Scott for 217 yards for the Bucks last week. And, of course, Rummel shut out Thibodeau, 56 to nothing. That's going to be a great classic. Day. Take a look at number four, Jesuit. And, uh, uh, again, a little bit untested there. Some people say, however, they did beat Holy Cross, Shaw, Dillisau, Errett, and Chalmette. And uh, they handled teams that are struggling this year with ease, and that's because Tanner Lee has taken a real leadership role in that Blue Jay program. They haven't been challenged yet, and that, that's going to be coming, so they'll have some tough games in the next few weeks. West Jeff's only lost, by the way, to Destrahan, 22-12, so uh, good game with Rummel and West Jeff. In 4A, Class 4A, Neville, still Neville. Easy win. They just continue to roll at the very top, but look at Ed and the car with their awesome defense right behind them, both undefeated at 6-0. and Ed Nicar with a great defense, but a great offense as well with Speedy Knoll and uh, Stan is Dobard, old Perry Walker, big win over Mac down to 35. Salmon with just one win, uh, and they'll be uh, over St. Paul's. East Jefferson's trying to bounce back after that loss last week, and Holy Cross with a big win over St. Augustine. Yeah, and, and Holy Cross and St. Aug, you can watch for both of those teams to climb back in that pull. St. Aug, again, I think the sleeper, they are so loaded, so dynamite. Watch them closely. In 3A, Parkview Baptist continues to lead that poll. No surprise there. They just outscored East Feliciana last weekend to remain undefeated at 5-0. And, oh. and uh, Roger with uh, Brazil with that speed we showed him a little bit earlier. Uh, Lewis Cook, the head coach at Notre Dame, always has the, the, uh, them ready. And um, St. Charles Catholic now 3-2, and two, and Frank Monica does a great job with the team out there the, coming back off of the score. Yeah, I call that three and Isaac because those two losses can be directly related to Isaac. You get Isaac behind you, and Frank Monica's got that team playing the kind of football everybody expects a Frank Monica team to play. In Class 2A, John Curtis is John Curtis. Hey, they're doing so, they did so well last week against the Big East and, and uh, Conference USA, the Big 12 might be off extending an invitation. The University Lab is also a, a school that really takes uh, takes a lot of attention. Evans are number five. Newman is a, a team with some injuries, a young team, but they also are very talented. And once Jay Tyler comes back, I think you'll see a different a different Newman offense. But uh, they, that 2A is, is probably the most competitive in the entire state. Are you a little surprised that Evangel number five already has two losses on the season? No, because again, 2A is the most competitive in the entire state. And, and you know, they play a tough district. Uh, Calvary's in that with them. So uh, 2A is, is very, very tough. You won't have any winners or losers, just survivors, survivors in 2A. You bet. And then Class 1A, Washita Christian, up at the top, just keeps on rolling. And Kentwood, the Ruse, are four and one. 
uh, victimized by Bernardo, but uh, Haynesville, the tour is also a, a team that always makes it interesting and gets close to the dome. Southern Lab, what great talent they have, and Cedar Creek, five and one right now. Uh, still looking for Kentwood to make that uh, first trip to the Louisiana Superdome. Uh, they haven't been there in a while, and this looks like it could be the year they're staying in the top five uh, for SportsNola.com. And you know, the thing about Kentwood is they have such tremendous support there. The Kangaroos always have a talented team, and uh, so everyone is, uh, really turns out, but they always have a lot of numbers and a lot of talent. A lot of, a lot of Kentwood players have gone on to the uh, to college ranks. Well, that being said, let's take a look at some of the key matchups this week and uh, some of the games you might want to take a special look at. So, key matchup number one would be Slidell and St. Paul's. It'll be at St. Paul's, and St. Paul's with that tough loss last weekend, now 3-3 three and three on the year, and uh, it doesn't matter with records here because St. Paul will have their hands full again with Slido. When the, when the North Shore teams meet, it's a battle. Yeah, and St. Paul's is a team that hitting stride now. They, they started the season with a, a pair of losses that bounced back. Next one up is a game we're going to have for you right here, and that is Newman at Curtis at uh, Mus Bartolino. That will air on tape delay Saturday morning at 9 o'clock. It'll be played Friday at 7 p.m. And you heard uh, Nelson Stewart talk about the game. John Curtis is John Curtis. You're going to have great athletes on both sides of the ball for the Patriots, but some very good athletes for the Newman Greenies. And, and uh, Gilly, Gilly Andrews is going to do a good job at quarterback for the Greenies. Got to put Jesuit at Franklinton in here as a key matchup because the Blue Jays are undefeated. They keep on rolling, and they just do what they have to do to win. This, this is going to be a tough matchup for Jesuit. At Franklinton, that's not an easy place to win. West Jeff at Rummel, and again, Rummel number one in our 5A poll. West Jeff 4 and 1 talked about this when we looked at the, a 1 versus a 9 at Yenny Stadium, and uh, this is on Saturday at 7 p.m. And again, Gugis last week, the quarterback for West Jeff, 353 yards, three touchdowns. Devin Scott was a recipient with six catches, 217 yards. Rummel defense keeps him in a lot of games. It's tough to run against that Rummel team. And Warren Easton at St. Aug. Warren Easton with a big win, uh, handing East Jeff their first loss of the year last week. Warren Easton has a lot of, uh, right now, they're playing with a lot of confidence in St. Augustine. They have a revenge game. They want to feel like they belong, so you'll see their best effort. That's just a few of the key matchups. Be sure to follow and support the local high school in your area. And I'll tell you what, Renee, good games, and I'm looking forward to what's going to happen this weekend. The weather's going to be great. No reason not to go out and catch a high school game. With that, we'll take a break, and we will be back with our Player of the Week and our Coach of the Week. We are at Brewster's Village Square, Chalmette, back right after this on the Prep Recruiting Insider. Look at the delicious steaks you can get at Brewster's. Burger, Ken Berthelot, along with Renee Nado, and it's time to announce our Player of the Week and our Coach of the Week. This segment is sponsored by Max Home and New Bath, and with us to make the announcements is the Director of Marketing for Max Home, New Bath, Frank Amos. Frank, thanks for being with us, and we appreciate you being here. Thank you for having me. Would you announce our Player of the Week, please? Absolutely. The Player of the Week is South Plaquemines quarterback, Dominic Henry with a 60-13 win over District Foe Newman. Henry had 20 carries, 189 yards, and five touchdowns. Renee, you were very, very high on this young man and, and uh, you picked him out as the player of the week without hesitation. Yeah, you know, and the thing is he averaged over nine, uh, over nine yards a carry, almost nine and a half yards a carry. He did a great job with his feet. He's a quarterback, and, uh, and, and the thing is that he, he runs a, a good South Plaquemine offense, and, and Nelson Stewart, who was with us a little earlier, can talk about that. But that district it, with the South Plaquemine and Newman and John Curtis, wow, they are loaded. That, that's a tough, tough district, and South Plaquemine is a force to be reckoned with. Well, I think you're going to like our Coach of the Week selection. And again, Frank, would you please announce the Coach of the Week for the Prep Recruiting Insider Show? Absolutely, Ken. The Coach of the Week is Phil Benko. Head coach at East St. John notches second win of the season with a 28-0 shutout over Iraq. Banco and his community have overcome tremendous odds 
after losing everything including uniforms and equipment and was still able to bump his record to two and three. Well, Phil Banco, uh, and again, we did a football game on this uh, station where he was uh, coming back from Isaac with the flooded team. Nike had helped out and provided uniforms for that team. And, and I got to tell you, pulling this team together and coming back and getting the first win is something very, very special for this team, Renee. A lot more goes into just coaching X's yes, and O's. And, and, and he yes. did a great job. That went over Eric as a team that's struggling right now. But the thing is that uh, Phil Branco did a great job. And a lot of, a lot of programs would have folded their tent with nothing, no equipment, no locker room. And, and just got their stadium back. And Phil Banco did a great job, not only with the football team, with, with the entire community East St. John. Well, this is a recruiting show. And Frank Amos, one of the things you have to do as the director of marketing is recruit. Recruit good people and recruit the customers for Max Home and New Bath, one of our fine sponsors and a, and a group that's been with our station for a long time. Uh, talk a little bit about that and, and tell us how you're coming along. Absolutely. Um, you know, as, as a company, we're the eighth fastest growing company in Louisiana, and, and with a growth rate like that, we are we are needing really good people to fill a lot of positions. And that's um, some of the positions we're talking about right there. Tell us a little bit about Event Marketer and Canvas Marketer and the other two positions on the team. Absolutely. Um, the, the Event Marketer, uh, what we do is we contract with Sam's Clubs, Home Depots, uh, we do uh, home shows and events, and we need people to present our products to customers that are out there that are looking to update their bath areas, their windows, um, sun decks, etc. And when somebody would call or go to the, the website to apply for one of these positions and, and uh, maybe get an interview for one of these positions, they can know they're coming on with a local company, which is very important. Absolutely. We've been local um, since 2003 uh, when the company uh, started with Mr. Larry Kloss as the CEO. It was just him, his dog, and his cat when it first started out, and now we have well over 120 employees. And Larry Kloss says one of those positions is just making customers happy, keeping customers happy. It's the happy position. That's right. I mean, we do believe in everybody happy. That is our motto, and we do everything we can to live up to it. And the growth of this company, just fantastic. We want to compliment you and Larry Claus for the fantastic job of growing this business and keeping it local and satisfying your customers that you've done. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Ken. We're going to be back to Brewster's in just a moment. I want to thank Max Home New Bath for announcing our Max Home New Bath Coaches and Players of the Week, and Frank Amos, the Director of Marketing, for being our guest. We'll be Welcome back to Brewster's here in Village Square in Chalmette. It's the Prep Recruiting Insider, Ken Berthelot, along with Renee Nado. And Renee, we have a very special Legends guest with us. Young man sitting on the side of you, Danny Wimprine, a young man who played on three state championship teams at John Curtis, was uh, there for four, but he started at Curtis for three of them. Then at Memphis University, uh, helped lead that team to the New Orleans Bowl, where in 2003, he was the most valuable player Got some interesting stories to share with you. Danny Wimprine, thank you for being with Renee and I on the Prep Recruiting Insider. Oh, thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. You know, thing, you, he, something you mentioned, he was on four Super Bowl, four uh, championship, state championship teams in football, two in baseball. He was the only quarterback to be <clears throat> there for four teams, four state championship teams. And, and Danny, I remember, uh, you know, when you went to Memphis and everything, but that recruiting process was kind of interesting. I remember doing games at Curtis uh, at, on TV and so many people were looking at you as a safety or an outside linebacker, and, and, and I know you had the skills to play quarterback. Kind of take us through that recruiting process and what almost happened and how you went to Memphis. Yeah, it was, it was interesting, and, and you know, I was blessed to be able to go through it. Uh, it was an exciting time for me and for my family. Um, you know, being a six-foot quarterback that doesn't throw the ball very much in high school uh, presented some challenges, challenges, I think, for a lot of schools uh, coming down to New Orleans and watching me and, and seeing some film. But, uh, you know, as a young kid, I always wanted to go to Notre Dame. That was a dream of mine. And uh, Notre Dame was after me a little bit. And uh, I had some visits set up with some bigger schools, and uh, like Clemson and Notre Dame. And, 
And uh, Notre Dame late in, during the process came in and committed who they thought was the number one quarterback in the country, uh, which actually went on later, I think a year and a half later, to, to transfer. It wasn't working out for them. But, uh, they kind of pulled back on me a little bit, if I could say that. They pulled back a little bit, and, and Memphis came in towards the very end real, real strong. You know, it was telling me that I was their number one uh, recruit. They really wanted me to be there, change the program. Uh, it wasn't very far of a drive, and I went up there, and I felt really comfortable. I think that's the biggest thing is there's a lot of stuff that goes on in the recruiting process, a lot, yes. of, a lot of talk, I guess, I, yeah, you know, something like that. A lot of talk and a lot of nonsense, and you have to try to uh, – weed out what's going on. You have to figure out where you're going to be comfortable for the next four or five years of your life because it is going to be uh, instrumental in your future. You know, where are you going to go to school? Who are you going to be spending your time with? Who are you going to hang around? That kind of deal. So I went up to Memphis, felt at home. It was only a six hour drive from home. Felt very comfortable and uh, I actually committed to Memphis uh, two weeks later. I canceled my recruiting trip to Clemson and Notre Dame. Thought it was a place that I could play as a true freshman. and. Uh, and, and that was it, and I was happy to be able to go there. Well, from the Clemson standpoint, uh, Bowden had left Tulane. He had go, undergone a 12 and 0 year. He's at Clemson. Did he come after you real hard? Yeah, and, and Burton Burns was one of their guys that was down here. Had a good relationship with a lot of the coaches from Curtis, uh, and they came down here. And, and and Clemson was another school that had committed a, a, a high prospect quarterback, and they also wanted me to be looked at as an athlete or, or a strong safety and, and, and w wasn't quite sure the angle that they were going to try to take. So that was that was something that I wasn't sure of, but to be able to go into a school and, and, and think that I was the number one recruit, uh, be uh, pretty happy about the future there for the next four or five years and, and to enjoy the time and enjoy the people. The people were super nice at Memphis. Uh, I felt comfortable. I felt like it was a second home, a second family up there. And uh, that's really was the biggest reason why I decided to go up there. You know, people remember you from being with the Voodoo. Uh, you went to camp with the Cleveland Browns before going north of the border with the Canadian Football League. But uh, before we get to that, I want you to explain the Voodoo and everything. But you were the all-time leading passer in Memphis history, and you had some classic shootouts with Eli Manning when he was at Ole Miss, didn't you? I sure did, yeah. Well, I uh, was lucky enough mm -hmm. to be able to throw for 10,000 yards in my college career. Uh, when I was a junior, uh, I, I was really hoping, you know, that I would be able to play Eli at Newman when I was at Curtis, but he graduated. We actually played Newman in the Jamboree the next year, uh, so I missed him by one year. Well, all of a sudden, uh, I go to Memphis, and, and we play Ole Miss almost every year to every other year up there, and uh, geographically, they're not very far. So, uh, yeah, I did have some good matchups against him. I was uh, kind of good buddies with him from the Manning Passing Academy from years prior. And uh, actually, my junior year was his senior year. We actually were able to beat them, and uh, it was it was you know good bragging rights for me for the next year. But and they went that year. They actually went on to win the Cotton Bowl. So we had a great year. Uh, went on to win the New Orleans Bowl, and then the next year, my senior year, after he was gone, we beat him again. So uh, it was good for me to be uh, you know two and one against uh, Ole Miss. Uh, I feel pretty good about that. You went to uh, camp with the Cleveland Browns. Went north of the border in the Canadian Football League and then back to New Orleans to play for the Voodoo. Kind of take us through that a little bit, Danny. Yeah, when I was a, a, a free agent after college with the Cleveland Browns, I went through camp for a few weeks. Uh, felt like it was pretty much a numbers game. They had to keep a couple more wide receivers and some offensive linemen. They already had three quarterbacks there. Um, got, got released, went up to Canada. Uh, had a great time. Uh, beautiful country. Was happy to be able to go up there and uh, have that special time. I uh, was actually up there for Hurricane Katrina and, and was away from all the stuff that was going on down here. But uh, it was a beautiful place, really happy and pleased that I was able to do that. I wanted to come back home, got a call from Coach New a few times of the New Orleans Voodoo, um, and, and really uh, in 2007 started a relationship with him as my coach and, and mentor and, and, uh, and just, a, just a special guy and uh, played with him in 2007, 2008 and then sat out for a couple of years when the Arena League was having some problems, came back again in 2011 and, uh, and played and uh, wasn't so great, but uh, now it's uh, moving on to the, to the next stage of life. One of the things you're doing now is staying close to your alma mater by uh, doing internet games, radio internet games on iHi, and you're working with Kevin Fayard. Yep. That's got to be something special. What type of challenges and, and what type of fun has that brought into your oh, life? Oh, it's been great. I mean, last year, <clears throat> iHi.com came to us and, and said that they, they were going to take on 25 schools around the country. 
Uh, they picked us to be uh, one of the top programs around uh, uh, the, the nation, and, and, and so we took that on. We wanted to take it uh, as professional as we could, even though Kevin and I had never done anything like this before. But we were excited to take on the challenge. Uh, each and every week, like you mentioned, it, it, it uh, presents another challenge depending on the team and the, and the people that we're going to be able to play. But uh, it's been exciting. The biggest thing is I always tell people after you finish playing the game, if you can stay around it, uh, you're kind of able to scratch that itch. So Kevin and I really enjoy it. We do it each and every week on iHigh.com, and it's uh, it's been a blessing to stay around the program. We have Go ahead, Brad. Go ahead. In the final four, final 30 seconds, what did it mean to you to play at John Curtis? And I know you're going to be a daddy for the second time soon. Yeah. Playing at Curtis, what did it mean to you, daddy? I mean, it's 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 uh, paid huge div dividends for me in my life. Uh, the Curtises are, are best friends. I mean, they, they are my best friends, and to me, they're like a second family. Uh, they took me in when I was pretty much lost in life uh, as a young man and, and kind of made me who I am today. And, and uh, I couldn't be happier to be close to the Curtis family. Uh, it's, it's been a huge blessing for me. And, and uh, you know, my, my, my children are going to go there, and hopefully I'll be passing that legacy on down to my kids. Danny Wimp, Brian, thank you for being our Legends guest on this edition of the Prep Recruiting Insider. Thank you so much. All right, we're going to wrap it up uh, from for the Legends guest, and we'll be back to wrap it up from Brewster's right after this on the Prep Recruiting Insider. Brewster's 8751 West Judge Perez Drive in the Old Village Square. A great place for meals, a great place to watch games on the big screen TVs. They're known for the Brewster Burger and some mighty fine steaks. And we've got a big football game coming up and also a television show we want you to watch every Monday. Watch Sports Nova TV with Torrance Small and Brian Alley Walsh as they join host Ken Trahan and they have more fun covering the Saints, LSU, Tulane and Prep, uh, wrapping up the weekend that you'll ever see three guys and their rotating guests have each week. That's every Monday at 6 and the first NBC Prep Showcase game of the week is Newman and John Curtis. It's Friday at uh, 7 p.m. at Mus Bartolino. We will air the tape delay of that Saturday at 9 a.m. Renee, you and I are going to be working that game, and I'll tell you what, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's always fun when you watch John Curtis uh, play football, but it's, uh, it's always fun, too. And I think we were hoping to see Jay Tyler. We're not going to see him, but this Newman team is going to come out ready to play. It will. They'll have a few tricks, and Nelson Stewart always does a great job. He's a good coach. And, and, and if you're a recruiting buff a little bit, you want to see a lot of players that John Curtis has that will be playing on the next level, not only this year, but you get a lot of juniors that will be highly recruited for the 2014 class. So you don't want to miss this game, Newman and John Curtis. I want to remind coaches and players, hey, send us your video. You might show up on the Prep Recruiting Insider. I want to thank Brewsters and everybody at WHNO TV 20. Good show. See you next week on the Prep Recruiting Insider.